Well, welcome to Colonel Islesworth State Historic Park. I'm Steve. This is Gerilyn, and we're going to be taking you through the house behind us, which is the home of Colonel Allen Allensworth, the namesake of our park. And uh, we're going to be uh, going through there, and Gerilyn, lead away, and I'll run the camera today. Oh, it's so difficult when I'm not prepared. Good morning, everyone. And, uh, Good morning. You want to do this whole thing? And um, I'm assuming that you know we're in the Central Valley of California. Has that been explained to everybody? It's predicted to be 111 degrees. So let's go oh inside. And the building's, building's going to be a little cooler for us. That's hot. That's Get out of the sun. Are yeah. You, are you near Los Angeles? <laughs> no, we're about two hours north of Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Oh, there's uh, Moses and his crowd. We got both rooms in now. All right. Hi there. Oh, Moses. Bali. Oh, Bali. <laughs> hey, everybody. Come see. Hello, Molly. And John and uh, Steve. Hi, Steven. Okay. Bye. She's ready. Guys, she's ready to start. All right, Steve. All right, everybody. Come up, everybody. Okay. Go ahead. Um, well, everybody's having a good time. Welcome to the parlor of uh, Colonel Allensworth and Justine Allensworth's home. This is a, as we go further on, re to remind, this is a prefabricated home. It was purchased possibly from the Sears Roebuck catalog in 1911, but they're not 100% sure, but it is a catalog home. And it is the basic four corner style, and we are standing in the parlor. Mrs. Allensworth was uh, quite a pianist, so it's nice we have a little piano here. And every now and again, when we bring in some small groups, we'll, uh, we'll let people play the piano. It's quite uh, entertaining to hear some of the songs that have come out of the piano. Playing. On the piano, there is a couple of photographs. These are of the Allensworth's daughter. The one you're focusing in on now is Nella. She was the younger of the two daughters. And then over next to it is Eva. And they were both born uh, in Kentucky while they were living in Kentucky, Bowling Green. And they traveled with their parents uh, all over the country. While uh, Colonel Allensworth, who would have been captain at the time when he first started in the 24th Infantry as a chaplain. He spent 20 years of his life in the military. Also, you're focusing in on the little golden Buddha. That is an original artifact that we have here. It was purchased in the Philippines while the colonel was over there during the Philippine insurrection. Uh, so uh, he was a Baptist uh, by trade minister, but he was also a very open-minded minister. So uh, having a golden Buddha- Were they like Buddhist? Him, they were not, they were Baptist. So the Buddha was either a gift or a souvenir that he purchased while in the Philippines. Cool. See how she heard me ask that question, guys? Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on, check it out, Dad. Oh, it is. <laughs> a 1903 uh, officer's tunic. And uh, it's really pretty stylish even by uh today's standards you can see the buttons are hidden it's called a mohair trim wow. and his rank would have been up here on the shoulder boards very sharp beautiful color what we're showing you now is regimental colors Cool. As a colonel, he was entitled to have his own colors. That was one of the privileges of rank of being a colonel. Okay. Nice. Why don't we go into the kitchen? Hi, would you like to do that? Are these people? Are these people? 
Yeah, look. See, there is. Say hi. Hello. Hi. hi. I'm going to wave back. There. She's in California. Right? Hi. Hey, you're on the big screen. Hi. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Logged in. Those, see those five screens on the side? We're logged in. So if people all across the country are doing this, cool. That's pretty cool. Are you guys enjoying it? Yeah. That's right. Get you by foot walk. Go ahead. Okay. We're looking at an ice box. So uh, everybody has one nowadays. We just call them refrigerators. <laughs> So where was their fridge? This is it. Oh, they had nice box back in those days. They had ice boxes back in those days. Not everybody in the community did. Is that an iPad on the top? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't hold the camera steady if I laugh. You kind of look like an iPad on top of that ice box. That's so funny. <laughs> well, the ice went on top, and then your food went down below. <laughs> the CPU is at the bottom, and the screen's on the top. <laughs> Did they add to a wood? That's a small one. Yes, it is. Yes. Mike, what was your we question? We actually have a smaller one in the park. Did they add, no. Do these things actually work? Do these things actually work? Yes, they do. If we were to put ice in there, it would work. It's kind of like an ice chest. But it's an ice chest made out of wood. It's all insulated. And oh. zinc lined. We're going to take you in really close. Galvanized? Yeah. Oh, well, there's the thing. It's galvanized metal. So the ice would go in there. Let's see. And there's a drain hole. Drain hole. And then your, your cool drinks and whatnot would go there in the bottom. So. Drain pipe. Collect at the very bottom. In a pan. Oh, because ice melts. Aha. Like when you go camping and you take your uh, insulated styrofoam cooler with you. Right. Exactly. This is the igloo of the day. And would the ice be brought on the train? Yes. The ice was either delivered from the little town of Corcoran, which is about 20 miles north of us, or Bakersfield, which is about 45 miles to the south of us. There's a story by a young man named Henry Singleton who lived here, whose father ran the store. And he talks about a day, uh, one of the worst days in the community, his father ordered 400 pounds of ice and the train broke down. And by the time it arrived, they had 400 pounds of wet sodas. Oh dear. We're living in a where we're having this week of uh, over 100 degree temperatures and you have no ice delivery for more than two days, you could see oh, how the town was probably fairly upset by that uh, news. Yeah. Because, yeah, ice delivery was probably maybe every other day. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, I was thinking with a box that small, it sure would melt pretty quick in the kind of heat you got. Yes, yes. Yeah, because... Uh, bye. 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 Bye, Buffalo. Bye. 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 All right, guys. See you later. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.